Didn't give me what I want, so I'm taking this shit My money too long to be giving two shits Stop playing, I don't um, give well, a fuck about I'm your artist, life You got a man, uh, Sean's my curator And um, essentially this year, a lot of collaboration um, I think that's something that uh, Pittsburgh um, and I'm a transplant, but since what I've noticed is Pittsburgh lacks, and it's been validated by meeting people like you. It's like, yeah, they want to collaborate. Um, it's not me like being like, oh, I'm not from here, but I'm trying. No, it's like I actually I'm plugged in, and I see that there's a lot of opportunity out there if people would collaborate. I mean, I think that's what uh, attracted us to you guys, right? Is like we were watching uh, how you've managed to take pop art, uh, which has been done in the city for. Mm -hmm. 70 years right mm -hmm. and and bring it to the masses again and, and make it relevant mm -hmm. and i think in your model is, is some interesting bits because we don't see usually in the city of pittsburgh art kind of popping like you guys are popping so what do you think was the was 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 you guys have done different than maybe some artists in the past haven't uh haven't done um i think what we've done uh is I'm creative, but I'm very business minded. I don't know, you know, most artists don't, aren't really like that. Uh, they're, they're very creative, but the business side lacks. So they're able to kind of get their value stolen. And there's a lot of creative people out there that like just need access. Yeah. Um, so when I saw what you guys were doing, I was like, oh, they're just, they're, they're giving, they're trying to give access and allow and incubate creativity to grow it and then monetize it. I was like, it's brilliant. We, we preach that gospel all the time. The idea that, um, you know, as a city, for us to continue moving forward, we have to break down some of these enclaves. And there's yes. enclaves everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. There's enclaves in the startup world. There's enclaves in the academic world, like CMU and Pitt and, and mm -hmm. like the big universities. There's enclaves with the with the traditional art center in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, I'm just, you know, I think that I think it's awesome that you guys are are essentially making your efforts to connect the dots primary part of your business model, right? You know, it, it's crazy to build a business the other way. Yeah. Um, to say, this is what I want my business to be. And then in 2014, not acknowledge all the parts that you come across on a daily basis. That's just like, you can just interact and integrate. Yeah. Um, so, so culturally, is it, is it a competition model or is it a collaboration model? And from like, you guys are, are about the collaboration. Mm -hmm. it's for our, it's a collaboration model for us, um, where it allows you to, to maximize one talent to, to, incubate you know creativity but at any point send someone and be like go do your own thing if you want to yeah. and not and not have them locked into x y or z yeah so that, you know probably a generational thing right like i think that <clears throat> the old way of thinking about business is very much about building that enclave it's totally different now yeah i can scratch and i have i've screened people on on twitter to see if i was going to work with them why shouldn't you be able to do that? You can read through all their tweets. Yeah. You read what they're about. You see, you just tweet things out. You see if they retweet a certain thing. You see what they put. And they're, they're a real person on the other side with a real skill with something real to offer. It's kind of fun, right? Because sometimes it feels like... It's like a scavenger hunt. And there's an... <laughs> You can see folks getting lapped. Like you can feel the culture shifting, the paradigm shifting, right? Yeah. And you see all this uh, new way of looking at business, new ways of looking at how communities engage and interact and across class, across race, across mm -hmm. everything, but uh, still persist these these enclaves and these mm -hmm. ideas of, of keeping everything to ourselves. Yeah. And uh, But in that, I think there's real opportunity, right? Because those folks are by nature slow moving. They're not really interested in dynamic change. Mm -hmm. And what you guys do at Studio M and like what I like to think we do here at the hardware store is we just adapt really quickly. Yes, Like whatever's absolutely. happening on the ground, absolutely. today we can do that thing. You, you have to be able to do that. You have to, in 2014, <laughs> you can't be held back and restricted by red tape. It slows your business. Now, what we've been able to do is at the end of the day, if we're going to go to a company and be like, we're going to do X, Y, or Z or produce this video or this content for you, or we, we can bundle a package based off of what we can make in house. Um, it shouldn't be the other way around. What, what's happened is people, you talk about the enclaves, people have locked what they're offering and increased the value of it and people can't afford it anymore. And it really has not as much value as it did 30 years ago. No. So a lot of the traditional agencies that we run across are selling the same decade old sort of on an upscale yeah relevance or what they can or saying is relevant but i yeah. I, I don't think it is not when everybody's connected <laughs> by a phone right or or connected by um you know the the twitter feed that's dynamic and changing absolutely every 15 minutes absolutely every bit of art you put up leads back to the the studio am's sort of service side mm -hmm. right like studio yeah. am can do things for businesses and do things for organizations mm -hmm. and you want to 
to have a way to engage those businesses and, and organizations. And I think, it's, I think it's brilliant. I think that it's going to bring you access to so many people that need the kind of creative mm -hmm. services that you guys can provide. Yeah. Like what is Studio AM going to be really good at for a brand or an organization? See, what I've realized where, where companies get in trouble is they get to the point where they start making so much money in-house that they, they don't collaborate and yeah. they don't outsource work when they should. Um, so their employees get overworked. Yeah. They, they, they implode. I don't want to do that. I want to be able to collaborate when necessary with the right parts. Like, okay, you guys on the, on the media front, kill it. Yeah. That's what you guys do on the creative front and the content side. We kill it. We don't, we don't have to, uh, write a contract and no, it's a collaboration. A collaboration doesn't have to have cash involved. <clears throat> it feels like you guys are gonna have an unfair competitive advantage when you walk into the room and you, your pitch is essentially, you know, we have all the what's a, well, What's an unfair competitive advantage when you made that? I guess like, from, like if you, when, when you hustled to make your advantage your advantage. I guess from their perspective, I'm, I'm talking, right? Yeah, so, but, but their perspective, that if they think <laughs> that, they're just wrong. Yeah. Like, and you know that. It's no, like, I'm no, with you. It's totally. like, there's no, you, you guys did it, it's 2014. So you guys are going to have an advantage in that, like, you're dynamic and, and able to really respond to a need on the ground. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I'm not sure that that's happening a lot in Pittsburgh, right? It's not happening a lot of places anywhere because yeah. at this point, creativity has hit its glass ceiling when creatives were put on salary. Uh -huh. Like that that alone, when creatives were like, now your creativity is worth $70,000 a year, they think $70,000 a year thoughts and ideas. <laughs> what? Well, and they also meter it out, right? And they meter like, it out, absolutely. <laughs> it's like, today now, I'm going to do $175 of work. Yeah. Creatives are the gold mine of America. Like no one can deny that. The creative people. Yeah. The fact that they're not using their their gold to like, which is their creativity to collaborate in the I mean, at this point, the the resources to do creative things are limitless. One of the things we have to say is that that the creative town is is the is the new blue collar America. That it, it is. It, that there's there's no no that's a fact. That's an absolute undeniable fact. You have a ton of companies that a previous generation built yeah. and need services that they can't sustain right now. Yeah, and, and then we often try to figure out how do we get those creatives paid, right? Like mm -hmm. how do we increase the value you, you, of the creative? You said it earlier, companies. Companies have to start have to start collaborating, open their doors, and they are. The symphony, they're doing it. They have they have to collaborate. And the companies that do, they'll see the value in it really quickly. Very quickly. And, and collaborate in, in a modern way, right? Like yes. not collaborate in sort of a very rigorous deliver like so here's a list of deliverables, here's a list of compensation. Nope. That's see, not organic. The way, no, we I've given the symphony every single good idea I could possibly think of and we haven't even talked numbers. How do you how do you increase their comfort level, right? Like how do you break down that wall where the symphonies could be comfortable? I give them all my good ideas without talking money at first. With this organicness. That's right? the thing, is a lot of ad agencies are like, okay, we're gonna give you seriously, think about this when a company's <laughs> like, um, so we're gonna give you two revisions and two good ideas, and then that's gonna cost eighty thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> no. If you're working with me, I'm gonna give you every good idea I can do, but yeah. you can't do it without me. I, I don't even know what the question is, really, right? Because I think what you're doing is so outside the box and I think it's so important. I think that there is all this withheld money in the city of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And there's all this wealth and it sits high above the community at large mm -hmm. and decides through whatever systems are in place to, to dole it out. The beauty, the beauty of what's going on in Pittsburgh right now is even if that money sits there, yeah. what's gonna happen is what I'm doing is gonna grow relevancy and those companies need relevancy. And then all I'll do is I'll sell them that relevancy because they're gonna have to buy it anyway. Like, so it's like, I mean, you're gonna need to collaborate at some point. Yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you're not gonna stop doing what you know work. I'm not gonna or stop. Or what you perceive to or, work. Yeah, or well, yeah, what, you, what, you, what, you, what you perceive to work. Yeah. You know, but, but you know, you know it's always right to do the good thing. It, the brokenness is, is that, that folks uh, aren't willing to yet let go of what they are convinced. I wouldn't even say, I wouldn't even say let go as much as people try to make one-sided deals too much. Mm -hmm. So you think it's a conscious effort? You think it's sort of like just it, it, ingrained it takes, in capitalism? It takes effort when, when absolutely, absolutely. And, and consumerism and capitalism, I mean, it's, it's, it's built into that structure. It had to be. Yeah. Because things were locked geographically. Yeah. It had to be like that. If you got on, you had to hold your territory. And you've seen that across industries, yeah. right? Like you've seen that like just, like, just like eBay, right? Like yeah. eBay destroyed so many industries because it took these little local markets mm -hmm. that existed and then blew them up into international markets. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, the, the competition was different all of a sudden. Absolutely. The very fundamentals of our economy can, can change in a moment. 
that they've been changing. Yeah, and in like the sharing economy and like things like Uber and Lyft, which are 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 sort of like I think in the same kind of it's yes worldview of what you're the, doing. Uber and Lyft, like it's 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 world changing. Yeah, like people don't understand like the the level of like what some of the things that are happening, some of these companies that are popping up. It's it's a it's a new way that. At the end of the day, how, how long has Twitter been around? How long has social media even been around? A decade, really. Right? How long do you think it'll stay around? Oh, forever. It's not going away. You know, the same way the Industrial Revolution happened. Yeah. They were like, oh, we, we <laughs> you got to collaborate to make something like that happen. Yeah. That's why I was like, Pittsburgh is right, man. It's like right. It's it's the perfect spot. I, I agree. I, I mean, Pittsburgh has all this tech talent, has all this creative talent, and uh, it's it still has that blue-collar Yes, work ethic. The right? blue collar work ethic is back. Yeah, it's in a different form though. And smushing that into modern views of economy, I think, is is a neat idea. I think that's where Pittsburgh can separate itself. Absolutely. I think like the West Coast has uh, too much money and too much wealth to let go of sort of some of the things that they've learned to do out there really well. I think same thing with like the bigger cities like New York and Chicago. There's just too much ingrained centralized wealth and power. Mm -hmm. But what Pittsburgh has is sort of a good mix and balance already. Yes. And if it's going to happen anywhere, if this new ideas and in in, if new economies are going to form, if new ways of doing business are going to form, it's going to be a market like Pittsburgh. Absolutely. Something that's progressive, Absolutely. something that its cost of living is low, where mm -hmm. you can take a risk mm -hmm. and still be okay, have mm -hmm. an apartment, have a car, that kind of thing. Um, your vision for how business can be done is a compelling one. It's it's an interesting one to us because we get very frustrated by being told that's not how we do it. Mm. That's not how it's been done. Mm. That's not tested. Well, of course it's not been tested. It's new. Yeah, so, I, yeah, I know, I know. So it's like it works. And so when I see when I see guys like you guys that are like, oh, we'll, we'll actually, yeah, we'll try this out. Yeah, it's like it's exciting. So I'm like, ooh, a new toy. Like, yeah. who knows what you know? Yeah, like, it's exciting. It's like we can. We just really got to like put our heads together and not get the egos involved and all the other stuff involved and really try to figure this out. And you can do some really awesome things. It's it's, it's about uh, taking risks with the assets that you have, but they don't mm -hmm. have to be traditional assets. They don't. And they don't have to be, to be traditional risks. Right, and they don't have to be. You don't like two hundred grand, four hundred grand. No, million they don't have to anymore. be. You no, know, it's like, oh, you guys have this equipment that I like. Yeah, th and you no, it doesn't have to be a traditional risk. Yeah, like that's that's one of the biggest mis misconceptions. What scares people into doing this? That risk is traditional. No, it's not. If communities can be healthy, this is the kind of stuff that makes them healthy. That it, it's this. Uh, everybody's all in and invested in each other's work and progress. Yes, and what traditional way of looking at things does is the exact opposite. It creates a hierarchy that locks out giant swaths of, 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 yes. of the people that live in the area. Yes. And it's dumb. <laughs> it's yeah. just it's dumb and it's not equitable and it's not sustainable and to, it, it can't it cannot continue to be done this way. It won't. Yeah. It won't. And you see a lot of people and, and, and it's been happening in other industries really quickly. The music industry you realize that the musicians were like wait <laughs> Wait, all we have to do is team up and form like, and we just collaborate on each other's yeah. things and we have relevancy and then we hold like what's valuable. It happened in the music industry changed like that because of this exact same thing. A lot of musicians are like, I don't like that because they went with the wrong model. It's like, that's yeah. not, that's not, you know, it's, it's nobody's fault but your own. I wonder since the, the collapse of sort of the record industry, right? Mm -hmm. Like since like Napster and mm -hmm. all that sort of essentially made it possible for an independent artist to exist and make a living. I wonder... Uh, what the stats are on that. I wonder like how in reality that's changed. I mean, we know lots of guys that have been in rock bands and hip hop guys and the tour and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And it's still a hard life, right? It's still Absolutely. a hard life. Now you have to think about this. When you, when you study, and I was telling Sean this, like every, every company you see, man, it's people's decisions and it's people's morals and motives. That's what a company is. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's their decisions and it's packaged and it affects a lot of things. When you look at the growth of how social media started and how Twitter started and how it affected people and how people have integrated into things, how it's integrated into sports center, people have learned to monetize it and we're still learning how to do it. What you, the issue with that is people haven't been able to take their, their ego out of the social media mm -hmm. and use it only as a tool. I've built a brand that people know what I'm about. That's why you reached out to me. Yeah, absolutely. How'd you know that? Uh, Twitter. That's crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> really, I mean, everything I know about you comes from Twitter. That's, 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 pretty, that's pretty crazy. We know it's crazy. Super crazy. Now, the craziest thing is I wanted I wanted you to see that. 
and I have a lot to offer. So now we can do business. Yeah, so you engineered that, right? Absolutely. And so you're saying that like independent musicians haven't necessarily learned how to engineer. But, but you have to learn how to mix the new with the old. Yeah. I'm doing old ad like hand painted things with the new. Yeah. The old's not wrong. It was innovated and it's been forgotten. The old is a good way of doing it. Well, and, and for anybody who's trying to build a brand or sort of build uh, some sort of reputation, right? Like they have to take risks with the new tools. Absolutely. They can't rely on what's been done a year ago because honestly, a year ago is probably pretty played out. Not only that, a year ago in 2014 is 20 years ago. Yeah, it just goes so fast. Exactly, but yeah. the fact that people don't factor that in into, into how they do business is crazy. So how do you balance that? Like how do you, as a part of Studio AM- You collaborate. Right, because like you don't you, know you have the to. days, right? No. You, you, you know, can't be an expert in nope. seven things. No, nope. you're an expert in what you do. Yeah, and then you need to find the people to, to surround yourself with that can give you Absolutely. access. Absolutely. Absolutely. You you have to collaborate. Collaborate, like collaboration, mm -hmm. and then you got to be able to produce content to show what you're doing. So, so tell me about who Studio AM is, right? It's you, Sean, and it's some other guys. That John, John Malecki, yeah. John Malecki and I, we played uh, football together in the NFL. Um, so one thing that, I mean, when I was in the NFL first, like it's been an interesting thing because a lot of people see this and they don't understand that everything that I've told them I, I intended to do, that's what I intended to do. Like mm -hmm. I didn't intend to like get into the NFL to be super like rich or super famous or any of that. Once I changed my goal into what I actually wanted to do, which was to use as a platform to gain contacts, to be able to be a businessman and to be able to be an artist. Like if people would actually believe that, they'd realize that a lot of the a lot of the connections and friends that I have are on a level of like brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Like they're they're really actually like very good friends of mine, and I want it that way. Yeah, and that's why I want to stay in Pittsburgh because what that gives me is it, it it's it gives me one I get to have that that team camaraderie that's always there. Yeah. That's if, if there's one thing I miss about football is that. So I made it. You made your team. Yeah, it's just a it's a business team. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, what's wrong with that? No, it's awesome. I think yeah. I think that that's 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 why people are in rock bands too, right? Yeah, like, like I was in rock bands for ten years because you you love that. It's the feeling of being like that. No, they're really like down for we're we're on the same page. Yeah, like, and so, it's a good feeling. So Studio AM is 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 an extension of that part of your personality in, to some degree. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's a a, a combination of three different things like. Um, my competitive nature yeah. um, and other people's competitive natures. I think it is also uh, my creativity. Mm -hmm. um, and largely in part, I feel like in a way, Studio AM uh, operates as is, is, uh, like a proving ground for a lot of people. For a lot of creatives that are like, I want to prove this, show it. Yeah. All, like literally, we do this all the time. We, we engineer a creative project, prove it. Well, I think, I think that resonates with me personally. I mean, I, I watched you up here, you're painting murals upstairs and we have some guys that do some print work and they can do all kinds of cool 3D printers sort of mm -hmm. pull up these 3D print yeah, awesome stuff. 80 yeah. foot tall dinosaurs or people or whatever. They can essentially model things out of vinyl. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting to me how warm and willing you were to kind of entertain all of that, like just to sit there and have a conversation about see, what they, they want to do and how see, you might about find that, that value. And the thing about that, when I when I'm talking to people who see, I, I don't I don't discriminate based on I, literally. Like I look at what someone has to offer. Yeah, <clears throat> the fact that they can do that service is amazing. I can use that and make it very very valuable. Like I'm not thinking of oh they're but wasting my time. It's like no seriously, how serious are you? But that's what happens though. So many yeah. people get in their own heads about how they are. It's yeah. their ego. Like yeah. get rid of that, do business. Yeah. It's you actually can bring me a thing this big, we can blow it up, I can use that in ad campaigns for installations. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And I get to paint them? Yeah. That's very valuable. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Yeah, it's very valuable. <laughs> I think you're a good example for, for the rest of Pittsburgh to follow. I think that if more people in the startup land, this is where we come from, right? Mm -hmm. We come from the incubators that are here in the city. Mm -hmm. And if more people in traditional business, and I'm, I'm talking the PNCs, I'm talking the not big nonprofits like yeah. UPMC, right? Yeah. If they would just get out of their own heads about why they are who they are. It's, it is a hard, it's a hard thing to do. The economic prosperity of the region would skyrocket. If I mean, would, it would be, and not only that, it would be 
fast. Yeah. Anybody who hires a New York agency when there's all this talent in Pittsburgh is out of their mind. They're crazy. Anybody who They're goes crazy. and hires a West Coast software firm to build their enterprise level app out of their mind. It makes no sense to us. They're crazy. All here in the region. And you're going to offshore essentially you see, know, that capacity. See, but well, you see why there's an issue, right? That's the same thing that happened with traditional work. Yeah. It's the same, it's the same flaw. Like all I'm trying to do is do it a little bit differently. Like the flaw is that like that happened, people instead of like really innovating a business model, which we couldn't, technology <laughs> limited that. Yeah. They had to outsource. Yeah. They they like, you had to to keep your business growing. Sure, sure, but you know? once you reach, say, you know, billion dollar status as mm -hmm. a business, maybe it's time to come back and look at your community, right? Absolutely. But yeah. at that point, you know how hard that is when, yeah. you, when you, you're you like, you don't even understand another structure. No, you can't even have the conversation. You can't, you can't even, no, you can't. Yeah, we've like, had them. We've yeah. had the one side of the conversation. And they're just like, no, like that, no, you don't understand. Like, does you're going to always work for us. Yeah, does not compute. And it's like, does no, I'm actually trying to like help. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's not the same. Like it's 2014. It's 2014. Yeah. You're the one who's messed up. Do you think that this kind of social entrepreneurship, that's what I'm going to call it for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this kind of collaborative entrepreneurship, do you think this kind of uh, taking advantage of the sharing economy, being fast, responsive, ditching sort of the blue, the red tape and the, the meaty, stupid contracts that nobody wants to read and wants to spend 20 grand on to have mm -hmm. lawyers vet, right? <clears throat> do you think that you think that's going to catch on? I mean, honestly, do you think that that we can overcome the inherent barriers put in place by the enclaves? I would hope not um, for this reason. And that's re one reason why I stayed in Pittsburgh and one reason why I make sure that like I try to be the best me. I yeah. don't want to do damage. I don't. But things have to be innovated. It's 2014. And you can integrate a new thing seamlessly if you collaborate. Like, it's as simple as just not outsourcing the work you don't have to outsource. Mm -hmm. Like, you're still going to get your same product done more timely, probably better, with more creativity in this city. And, and a layer of connection, right? And a layer of connection. I'm going to be like, you know, when I work with clients, I'm like, you need to have your brand at this event. I know this because this, I know these guys. We're going to, like, that's how it has to be done to grow businesses. People don't have, it's 2014, no young person. This is why young entrepreneurship is out the window because young people don't want to wait. Yeah. But at the same time, it's warranted. It's 2014. I think that uh, what you said is, is an important point, right? Um, one of the things we're working on now is how do you connect all these different networks, right? Mm -hmm. Like Baron Batch has a giant sized network that has tons of inherent value just because people listen to Baron Batch because mm -hmm. of your work, your talent, your message, mm -hmm. the things that you do, right? Collaborating and being able to get people who think alike, alike in different fields to be able to screen talent is essential. Mm -hmm. Where it's just like, yeah, you're going to have to prove it. You're going to have to work for your opportunity before you get paid. Yeah, <laughs> that's a tough thing for people to swallow. That's the only way it should be. Taking a risk on the hardware store, right? Like mm -hmm. putting your art in the hardware store is, is, is to break it down, is, is, a, is an economic equation, right? Like you have to decide as, as Baron Batch, uh, is the visibility, is the relevance, is the, is the right people here curating essentially mm -hmm. that art to make it have value for your brand, to make it have value past just the fact that it's on a wall. See, all somewhere. I looked at, the only thing I looked at when I, when I started connecting with you guys and you reached out, there's a reason I pushed out and said, who wants to have a business or a mural in their business? Yeah. The business that said we do, they, they'd be cool to collaborate. So the ones that did, I was able to know I was going in to do a mural, but to do business. All I did was invest in your company before I made a dime. Yeah. That's the only thing I did. Hmm. That's the only thing I did. That's that's a unique viewpoint, right? Like I, I don't I, I I think you do, but you are a very one of very few people I've met that kind of share that sort of mm -hmm. perspective on on how things are done. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to think we are too. We like to think that Oh definitely you guys are. We try to first engage and deliver value and uh, come humbly to people and mm -hmm. say, This is where we know we can help. That said, you know, yeah. Are you are you ready for that engagement? Are you yes. ready to have that? Have you done your part? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people come with the with with a hand, like their hand out. Yeah. Like, what what can you do for me? It's like this is not how the shit works. Yeah. Like, and it's got to be a quid pro quo. It's got to be. Yes, it's got to be an equal exchange of service. Yeah. You know. Like, yeah. I mean, it's the mentality of the handout. Like, it's got to go away. Yeah. It's got to go in. But as things innovate, 
it makes what's going on in the, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it, it, it's innovating right now. Well, and we also see people on the other side of it, like people that have influence in the community that suck other folks in that have less resources and essentially exploit them to some degree. Yeah. And we think that that's a bad model too. At the end of the day, I'll say this. The people who get sucked in, it's because they have their hand out. If they had something to offer, they'd be like, no, we're actually doing business. Yeah. You have the potential to be one of the, the people that can really sort of um, set precedence, you know, because of, of, of where you come from, who you are, mm -hmm. and I think the, the, the people that you've been able to, to connect with. And yeah. if you're successful, uh, and if you can demonstrate that, that this way of thinking, that this, this new way of thinking is going to work, I think that it's going to open the doors for so many people. Yeah. And that's something that's cool, man. That's but it's already, I mean, but at the end of the day, it's, it's already working. We're already sitting in here doing yeah, a podcast, pushing content. More people have influenced to be like, you know what? I want to collaborate. Because that's going to tear those enclaves open, right? Absolutely. And it's going to be good for them. Oh, so It's going to be so good for them. And when they realize that, they're going to be like, whoo, man. <laughs> like, yeah. And I'm telling you, Pittsburgh is, Pittsburgh is right there. We agree. And we think that, the, that there's people out in the community other than us, right, that, that see that. And I'll, I'll, I'll plug the mayor because... <laughs> He, uh, he, he says all the same things that we're saying. It's about giving this opportunity to everybody across the city. And, the, and, and the only way to do that is to open up these enclaves and to be proactive and engaging and just dig at it and just wherever there's overlap, collaborate and just yeah. do it. Yeah. Don't do it with the expectation of wads of money falling in your yes. lap. Don't do it with yes. the expectation that you're gonna be praised and singled out and held up in esteem. Just do it because that's what the city needs, and that's what the community needs so that we all are, you know, prospering. And, and that model means nothing without a collective group. Yeah. Nothing. It's not me. Like, I just realized I was in a unique position to, like, really reach out and, and start the conversation. Start it. But yeah. Like, without, without you or to be able to do this podcast, who's going to listen? Nobody. Right. You know, I didn't have those capabilities. Like, collaboration opens so many avenues. That some people don't even realize how many avenues it, open, it opens up sometimes, and they're just scared of it a lot of times. Yeah. And all you have to do, you can always go back. Well, they're scared of it because of competition, yeah. right? Like, they, in, inherently, they think that we're all competing. Like, there's six other people, say, from your age to my age, that I know are, are doing the same thing we're doing, essentially. Yep. But yep. who cares? Like, there's, we should all just be doing it together. Yep. And looking at who has what talent yeah. where. Absolutely. And saying, well, here's the job, it pays this much, Yes. This is the talent Johnny, that we good. need to do it. We know yeah. it's there, so let's just go I'm do here. it. All right, guys. Good job, man. Uh. Yep. They didn't give me what I want, so I'm taking this shit. My money too long to be giving two shits. Bitch. Stop playing, I don't give a fuck about your life, you got a man, I'm living grand Try and start my brand, don't got no job, yeah I'm bro man Been working hard, try and get this shit, just took a dab so I'm super hit It's Johnny good and I feel good, took a second dab so I'm real good I'm way better than you'll ever know, from East Hills to the West Coast With respect yo, that's the best coast, to get rest yo, we can let go Catch an L cause I'm next on your I thank God that I live it Then I get dressed in the fly shit And I go out and I get it Bitch, I got this shit on solo I got this shit on solo I got this shit on solo oh, I got this shit on solo Whoa.